Namaskar. It is my proud privilege that I have been given an opportunity to deliver a talk on history and gender in the online lecture series organized by Western Regional Center of ICHR. So at the very outset, I would like to thank the chairperson, uh, the honorable members of the ICHR, and uh, Dr. Jotsna Arora, the coordinating officer of uh, Western Regional Center, and Mr. Nilesh Sadhu for extending all the cooperation to me. I have been given a time of 45 minutes. And uh, I'm aware that since this lecture will be launched on the Facebook page of uh, ICHR, uh, it will have a mixed audience. So um, I consider that research scholars, research students, and uh, those uh, from non-academic background also will be listening to this lecture. So um, I would like to keep my presentation simple. And uh, at the same time, I will be presenting my research findings um, in the presentation uh, also. Um, so I have divided my presentation into two parts. Uh, the first, In the first part, I will talk about history and gender. Uh, and in the second part, I will deal with the, I mean, I will present my research findings in on a, a women's magazine, Marathi women's magazine, Arya Bagini, which was started in 1889 and it uh, uh, sustained for four years. Uh, now to talk about history and gender. Uh, history as a concept has undergone a lot of changes since uh, its very inception. So uh, for a long time, history was um, assumed or constructed as a past politics. So generally, the stories of kings, the stories of battles and wars always had a place in history. But eventually, uh, various uh, scholars, um, they tried to shape the very concept of history and br brought <clears throat> a lot of other um, themes into the gamut of history. So um, with Annal School and with the materialist interpretation of history uh, produced by Karl Marx, uh, history, the very concept of history uh, changed and uh, common man became at the center of history. So now people's history is written in the, uh, the historical writings. Naturally, so women's history uh, has also evolved on such lines that um, history is a story of uh, men as well as women. If you look at the journey of uh, women's history as a discipline, uh, we can see that um, there are three to four phases. Uh, at the very uh, uh, initial phase, uh, when um, historians realize that uh, it is only the uh, wars and kings and the main story we are projecting, uh, they started uh, taking up some biographies of certain women, such as um, Noor Jaha, Chand Bibi, or Queen of Jhansi. So either uh, some biographies were produced, or sometimes in the history textbooks, um, the entire framework uh, remained the same uh, as history is past politics, but only the uh, addition of certain names uh, of certain women uh, was uh, done. So um, in a very sarcastic manner, the feminist historians uh, call this phase as add and stir because they have not changed or challenged the very notion of history at this juncture. Then at the second stage, uh, so historians uh, took up some case studies of women's participation in the various um, struggles, such as peasant movement or workers movement or Indian national struggle, national struggle, women's participation in the Indian national struggle. So um, this phase is called as contributory history. Then in the 
aftermath of the uh, second wave feminism that is in the post 1960 period various feminist thinkers started relocating the role played by women into history so they mean to say women meaning common women so they started raising a lot of questions one is um, why is it that uh, it is only uh, history is only um, projected as if it is his story why is it that only battles and wars get prominence in uh, history uh, historical investigation whatever that women are uh, role that women have played right from the dawn of history right from the stone age in various activities such as uh, production uh, agriculture uh, small scale industries weaving industry and so many other um, fields uh, the conservation of culture arts why that has not been considered as worthy mentioning in history uh, apart from that the role that women play that uh, as mothers uh, they take care of the children uh, and they take care of the families uh, why the personal uh, domain the private domain is not considered as worthy mentioning into history so a, a, a couple of more questions also can be taken up here uh, raised by them uh, about the very methodology <clears throat> how history is constructed uh, so the very uh, concept that the aim of history writing is to produce what it really happened or to produce an objective truth uh, that was questioned by uh, feminist historians so um, history is not the mere narration of facts but rather it is the reconstruction of the facts it is the reinterpretation the interpretation of the facts and uh, naturally with the change in the uh, location of the person who is um, either um, the kind of sources that we use at the, uh, at that level or the person and the historian or the researcher's location as it changes naturally the um, interpretation is going to uh, be different so um, after raising all these questions uh, the historians the feminist historians started borrowing different uh, uh, tools from different disciplines and um, for like anthropology or sociology and they also um, made use of uh, different analytical uh, tools or concepts um, developed by women's studies or feminist theory such as um, um, uh, patriarchy or uh, gender or um, sexuality their analysis of sexuality and uh, uh, androgyny and so many other so uh, here we can say that gender became a prominent uh, or a feminist history and gender history became a, a new phase uh, and uh, the historians started uh, looking at history from the perspective of gender uh, now what do you mean by gender when you say that uh, to put it in very um, simple words i would say that gender is a social construct so um uh, based on the biological category of sex so um simone de beauvoir in her work the second sex uh, which she wrote in 1949 uh, she has made a statement which became very famous later on um that um, a woman is not born but she becomes one and this is uh, what does it mean it means uh, that uh, the feminine attributes and the um, uh, are uh, created in the society so um, let's take a few example that um, certain traits are attributed in the society as feminine traits and certain um, uh, qualities are attributed as masculine so women are considered that uh, women are covered and men are very brave uh, it is considered that women are weak and um, submissive and men are very assertive and they are very uh, strong. 
um, it is also considered that um, uh, women are irrational or emotional and men are very rational uh, so uh, and women are um, uh, very sensitive and men are not so um, because of these gender stereotypes um, uh, the men for example who are sensitive and if they cry in uh, um, sometimes they uh, are considered as abnormal or men or feminine men or if a woman is found uh, assertive she is considered as a masculine woman uh, not just this but even um, some role fixation is uh, done on this basis that um, uh, women are the mothers and women are the one who are um, supposed to take care of the children so nature has bestowed upon women the responsibility of uh, producing children but uh, taking care of the children well anybody can do however this is a um, typical social construct that it is the responsibility of the women and uh, so a sexual division of labor is done so cooking is something which women has to do and um, as if women women do not cook with their wombs they they cook so anybody can uh, cultivate or uh, learn cooking uh, even men can do that so uh, these are the stereotypes and role fixations is done that men and it is exploitative or i would say uh, it's uh, for even men uh, in the sense that um, men are considered to be the breadwinners they have to earn uh, and uh, they have to look after the financial uh, aspect of the family uh, so this is also again a different type of uh, stereotyping uh, so um, this logic of such kind of attributes also uh, gets carried forward in such a manner that uh, since it is considered that men are uh, aggressive or uh, assertive by nature uh, the violence that is caused in the uh, either in the domestic uh, uh, domain or in the public domain by men on women is justified on these grounds so um, basically uh, all these gender constructs are done uh, and um, reinforced uh, right from the childhood that um, for example uh, girls are given uh, as a uh, girl babies uh, they are given toys as toys they are given dolls uh, so they have to just to imbibe that they have to play a role of mother in the future and when we um, attend a birthday party we have seen that boys are generally not given dolls but they are given the uh, bat and ball some kind of toys so uh, this is the way um, the children right from the childhood they imbibe uh, different gender uh, construction and they imbibe it in so uh, th there are lesser chances of any um, you know rebel against that uh, so it is the success of the patriarchy that such kind of gender stereotypes are um, uh, constructed and reinforced not just through family but other uh, uh, I would say institutions uh, such as um, and mediums such as um, uh, myths and uh, literature, uh, schools, uh, church, the religious uh, institutes everywhere such kind of um, uh, uh, stereotypes are reinforced. So uh, in the aftermath of the rise of gender studies, it is commonly accepted that every aspect of reality is gendered and um, gender is uh, constructs are not monolithic and uh, they are shaped by different uh, uh, other elements in the society such as caste class and culture religion and nation uh, they also differ in terms of uh, space and time uh, so uh, different uh, mediums in the society uh, the um, such as um, myths or uh, through photography visual arts literature advertising film um, and television uh, the many forms of cultural representations are uh, uh, routinely uh, reflected uh, and uh, 
it happens that uh, these forms can both reinforce uh, gender stereotypes and they can create some more um, uh, liberating uh, kind of uh, representations of gender as well as the gender relations. Uh, so um, what there is another aspect of gender history that um, history is basically um, if we have to rewrite through the lenses of women we have to come up with some different kind of sources which have been written or um, left by women so um, women's writing here plays a very significant role and uh, there are scholars like um, jashodara bakchi and um, um, mira kosambi uh, malvika karlekar uh, vinaya khadpekar vidyut bhagwat Tara Bawalkar, uh, they have um, used uh, women's writings in a very crucial manner. And even the other kind of uh, forms, uh, other kind of sources, uh, such as literature and uh, photography, um, in order to reconstruct uh, the history of women through the lens of gender. Now, I think with this uh, brief uh, background, I would now uh, like to uh, present my um, uh, research findings on the uh, Marathi women's uh, magazine, um, Arya Bhagini. Now, if we look at the history of Marathi journalism, uh, and journalism meaning both uh, newspapers as well as magazines, uh, some uh, names are very prominent, like uh, Bal Shastri Zambekar, who started the first Marathi newspaper, Darpan. Or uh, Kesri has be played a very significant role in um, raising consciousness and awareness and spreading the spirit of nationalism in the Marathi-speaking communities. Uh, 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 as a magazines, I would say Masik Manoranjan and many other uh, magazines have played a significant role and they have been um, got place into the history of Marathi journalism. So if we look at the works produced by different scholars of uh, on Marathi journalism, uh, certain um, uh, magazines such as uh, um, Kirloskar and Sri, they are um, considered as uh, noteworthy. However, the magazines which were created and uh, started by women have not been given um, any mention or either they might have been mentioned, they have been mentioned in some of the books, but they have not, uh, not much research has been done upon them. So I would say those are really unexplored areas. So I felt like taking up some case studies. So from last few years, I'm working on some women's magazines. Um, Thanks to also the feminist intervention done by the scholars uh, who have um, come up with some encyclopedic uh, studies on women's writing in Marathi. I would like to mention here uh, the name of Sahitya Premi Bhagini Mandal, which is working um, from last few years. And they have come up with three volumes on Stri Sahitya Sa Magova, in which they have produced um, the um, entire history of women's writings. Uh, so um, I do not have much time to talk about this particular um, magazine. I I will be talking about for 20 minutes on this magazine. So um, uh, in the point structure, I would like to uh, mention some of my research findings. Now, this magazine Arya, with the name Arya Bhagini was started by a woman in 1889 in the month of december the first issue uh, of the magazine was launched now before going into the details of this magazine i would like to also present the social and the broader historical context uh, in just few minutes as we all know that um, uh, 19th century was an era of social change in the history of maharashtra as well as india it is also known for the moment of Renaissance. This is a period when um, in 1818, um, the, with the downfall of the Peshwa rule, the British rule um, started in Maharashtra. Uh, 
and uh, uh, the process of uh, modernity started shaping itself uh, into this into this particular period so um, modernity um, when it uh, got manifested in various uh, mediums through literature and through um, by the uh, very uh, inauguration of new western education and different mediums like uh, theater uh, everywhere uh, just quickly try to understand that what exactly it means so modernity is a value based term and uh, so uh, the the, the uh, this was an age when uh, the indian uh, intelligentsia got introduced to the new ideas of uh, equality uh, freedom individualism uh, rationalism and uh, they wanted to build a society based on uh, these uh, uh, values so naturally it uh, necessitated the redefinition of indian identities and also the redefinition of uh, the um, i would say the democratization of the social institutions and the social relationships mm -hmm. uh, this was a time when um, uh, women's um, uh, if you look at the status of women in this uh, age uh, there were a lot of uh, Uh, wrong practices or i would say evil practices which were prevalent in the indian society and uh, so um, if we look at this uh, context when uh, the social reformers heralded women's reform movement in this period it is generally considered and thanks to our uh, books or textbook which have always focused on uh, the male reformers uh, showing as if uh, the women's reform movement was always started initiated uh, by the male reformers and it is they uh, who uh, took up the various um, issues like uh, sati or um, women's education ban on sati uh, the um, uh, women's education then ban on widowry marriage uh, sorry a ban on uh, Uh, I mean, creating a new awareness about uh, this ban and um, um, initiating widowry marriages, and um, the other issues like torturing of women. So, creating awareness about all these women's issues. But uh, a new research that has come up uh, during last few decades have proven that um, women were also at the forefront. Uh, of the women's reform movement and uh, so uh, to give few names of the 19th century uh, women reformers uh, along with mahatma phule savitri bai phule uh, launched the um, different schools and the entire movement for women's reform and reform of the uh, shudra and ati shudras uh, pandita rama bai is there then later on pandit rama bai ranade um rakhma bai they all have um, uh, played a significant role into this movement and this is the context in which we have to understand that um, arya bagini also played a role um, in uh, disseminating the progressive thought about uh, women so here we can see that women were doing gender they were talking and they used this particular magazine as a platform where they can exchange ideas about the reform which were they wanted to initiate and the problems that they were facing the problems of gender discrimination that they were facing during this time so um this magazine which was started in it in the month of december in 1889 uh and it lasted for four years that is till december 1893 so i have um consulted all the um uh, issues of uh, this magazine which were which are located in the mumbai marathi granth sangrahalay uh, at the other and the government library uh, in pune and uh, this uh, magazine uh in the very first issue the editor of the magazine her name is uh, manak bai lad now we do not get much information about uh, 
the this uh, uh, woman uh, because of the paucity of sources. Uh, but this very first magazine makes a mention to the magazine which was started in 1886 by another woman called as Anandi Bai Lad, which means uh, in 1886 Arya Bhagini was launched and only two issues um, were uh, produced and then it was closed down. Uh, so Manak Bai Lad, when she again launched the magazine with the same name, she makes mention of this magazine and she uh, made an appeal to the country brothers and country sisters. This is These are the words used by her, Desha Bhagini and Ani Desha Bando. Uh, she makes an appeal that um, uh, some kind of financial support should be given to her so that she will be able to sustain uh, this magazine for a longer period. And she mentions that the this magazine, which was started in 1886, was closed down because of some financial constraints and also because of some other constraints. In the very first issue, Manabai also mentions that uh, the articles or letters or um, uh, questions uh, raised by women only will be published in the uh, in this magazine so it was purely by uh, magazine of the women for the women but the subscription of the magazine was open to all uh, the annual subscription of the of uh, this magazine was rupees one now uh, let us take a few um, uh, issues that uh, this magazine raised and i'll be concentrating only on two things one is the female education because um, uh, uh, the most discussed topic in the magazine of, of Arya Bhagini was female education and the second topic that i would like to discuss is the social reform the women's reform um, movement of those times and the issues of women in those times so um, this um, magazine had produced maximum uh, articles on um, women, women's education, uh, naturally because uh, the um, uh, writers who have either taken uh, uh, names like they have shown their uh, real identity, but most of the times uh, the authorship uh, has not been disclosed. Uh, and thirdly, some of the women have re returned with some, um, giving some pain name like uh, Gaud Saraswat Brahman, so without um, revealing the real identity of the author. So uh, if we consider all the articles produced in this magazine on the theme education, uh, it uh, typically echoed the liberal um, feminist thought. and. Uh, they have shown that uh, what are the aims of female education. So uh, to be a rational uh, human beings and uh, to become good wives and good housewives and good mothers. Thirdly, the nation needs to be needs to progress and therefore women need to be uh, educated. Women needs to be educated also to end their slavery in the house and they should be free from the clutches of all the uh, restraints they have also given importance to primary education and uh, higher education so um, i will just quickly take a few examples uh, from this that uh, what are the issues um, and what are the thoughts which have been uh, mentioned <coughs> on uh, women's education in this magazine. Uh, in one of the article, the, a woman says that um, it is the responsibility of the parents that they should um, educate their daughters, and especially the responsibility of the mothers that uh, they should not hurriedly get their girls or daughters married 
rather they should pay attention to their uh, education uh, in one of the articles uh, the um, writer says and uh, uh, i'm quoting her that uh, though some educated men try to educate their wives the ladies in the family such as in laws or other women oppose them they argue uh, why she should be educated at all is she going to do a job and quote uh, some other women have also written letters uh, and to the editor and they have mentioned in that they are ridiculed uh, as a european lady or as a reformed lady uh, if they are found reading a newspaper or this magazine so the writer answers uh, in the same article that um, women should not pay any attention to such nasty comments of the weird men and they should just concentrate on their learning in another article a woman mentions that um, people also raise questions that why women should have uh, any such magazine and in the same article she mentions that a women's magazine has also been started uh, in lahore uh, with the name bharat bagini by hardevi and there are other uh, regions also like assam where uh hemant kumari has started sugruhini and uh, bagini prakash has been started as a women's magazine in pune by chimna bai kadam so she is mentioning that uh, uh, this this is a testimony of the fact that women were aware that in other parts of the region also such um, women's magazines were coming up uh it's very interesting that uh, in one of the article the women um, has mentioned that what is the aim of female education and generally in those times if we look at the uh, views of other social reformers of those times they um, they always uh, viewed that uh, women should be educated because they should be good housewives and uh, uh, mothers uh in a typical uh, liberal um, theoretical framework but um, one article in this magazine um, one of the women says that uh, i'm quoting her uh, let women decide what they want to learn they can be philosophers they may deliver lectures they may become doctors they may write books and i found it really amazing that um, uh here comes uh, some different thought that uh, the aim of uh, female education has not been restricted to uh, women's uh, to becoming uh, just uh, good housewives or mothers um now if we look at the um uh, the popularity because of the popularity and importance how people uh started realizing of this magazine that uh, the queen of padoda chimna bai she donated rupees 200 for the magazine and she also paid subscription for 12 copies of this magazine and uh, uh, there is a mention there is an entire uh, play that has been uh, published uh, which was written by radha bai shetty who was the headmistress of the school uh, at godnadi and she wrote a, a play which was performed in her school and um, the theme of uh, this play was uh, debates pertaining to women's education so um, the gist uh, of this particular play i would like to um, share with all of you that uh, she mentions here that um, human beings there is a difference she has made a comparison between uh, human beings and other creatures and uh, that the other creatures have got uh, uh, they get the knowledge about their survival from nature and they have been bestowed upon by certain um, tools or weapons uh, such as um, um, nails or teeth they can they, this is how they can protect themselves 
but um, see, also they have been bestowed uh, with some kind of intelligence by way of which they can find their own habitat and they have uh, been given um, some natural things to protect themselves such as feathers or the kind of skin that they have got but um, human beings are different and uh, human beings have to acquire knowledge and that through knowledge only they have built uh, civilizations this is what she says and so she has mentioned that how human beings have created railways and uh, steam engines and they have provided some very affordable medium of transport so further in this uh, 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 play she mentions that men and women are both equal so uh, it is the role of men to earn uh, for the family and it is the role of the uh, women to take care of the family and both are equal and both are important they both have to play significant roles so she mentions that as mother women if they are educated they can play the role of mother in a better manner secondly she also mentions that um, if men and women both are educated then they can be really good um, friends and companions so um, she also mentions that uh, it is very wrong to assume that um, women are quarrelsome or they are uh, very talkative she mentions that all these attributes um, uh, are because women are because women are not educated so this entire discussion reminds me of um, Mary Walton Scraps uh, work, her text, uh, A Vindication of the Rights of Women, um, who is a very, Mary Walton Scraps, a very famous uh, liberal feminist thinker, in which she has mentioned the similar, uh, she has made a similar argument that uh, women are uh, not uh, by nature quarrelsome or uh, chatterbox. In fact, um, uh, because uh, of patriarchal structures, they become like that. And so if uh, they will start getting educated, uh, they will uh, definitely overcome all these vices. Um, OK. Uh, through this magazine, I also came across uh, um, an article which was Written by in written by a woman called Sonu by Narayan Bitoji in English, and the editor has made a mention that um, the the edit uh, the this particular magazine she produces articles only in Marathi, but since just to encourage women uh, to write in um, to, uh, to 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 learn English, she has. Um, publish this article on female education in uh, in her magazine uh, if we look at the um, other aspect of this magazine it has uh, supported uh, all the um, uh, progressive thought and uh, oppose all kind of wrong and evil practices pertaining to women it has supported adult marriage and marriage by consent in fact in one of the articles the um, writer says that uh, if uh, the girls will be educated and uh, they will uh, marry at after re reaching an adulthood so naturally then uh, they will select their own life partners so one can see that in uh, the last uh, decade of uh, 19th century women had quite uh, matured uh, thoughts in terms of um, uh, women's uh, reform. Uh, as far as the uh, various uh, reforms are concerned, in one of the, um, uh, while discussing the old custom of uh, uh, ban on re remarriage or sati, one of the writer clearly took a stand to keep aside the point whether these uh, customs had any shastric sanction. And she um, wants that, instead of that, she has suggested to look at the problem from the point of view of uh, the women, uh, more from the humanitarian point of view. 
and which is really remarkable she wants that um, people should look at it from the point of view of the girl who is has become a child widow also from the point of view of the parents of uh, the child uh, then uh, while referring to the act of uh, widow remarriage she emphatically put forth that uh, the government should uh, should have made a law allowing the child widows to remarry and banning the right to remarry remarry to the old men so uh, one can see a very, in a very fiery language she is uh, writing this uh, while uh, discussing the custom of dowry kantabai tarkhadkar she has mentioned that it has become um, i mean she she questions that why is it that the birth of a girl uh is not welcome in the family and she mentions that the head of the family uh always uh think or in a uh, or uh, for that sake the aryan people uh, do not yet know that women are equally capable of uh, doing hard labor just like men uh so um if you look at the other um um i mean uh, aspects of this magazine uh, the other issues that were taken up uh, regarding the um, uh, issue of the age of uh, consent uh, also regarding the controversy pertaining to pandita ramabai sharda sadan then about uh, the um, controversy that was caused because of the remarriage of uh, rg bhandarkar's daughter uh a gold sir uh, i mean uh, if we look at uh, these um, issues the magazine has always taken the stand and pro provided support to the progressive thought um i would like to mention here that uh, uh, re regarding the issue of arjib bandakar's uh, remarriage uh, arjib bandakar's daughter's remarriage one woman um uh, she wrote a article uh by taking the name one gaud uh, saraswat brahmin uh, so without revealing her real identity and she has questioned all those people who were demanding a uh, boycott on bandarkar family uh, by taking a stand that uh, well if uh, rg bandarkar a scholar uh, and like him has already produced so many shastric evidences to this particular custom why is it that uh, some people are demanding uh, by court to uh, the that family so um, if we um, i would like to uh, conclude here that um, um, if we look at the um, this particular magazine which uh, used to have a lot of um, i mean it provided a platform to women to discuss the various uh, gender issues of those times and it uh, it came up with uh, a lot of uh, different types of uh, features like uh, um, regular as a regular feature it used to have uh, women used to write letters on the um, previous um, uh, issues of the magazine the issues taken up in the previous uh, issue uh, then um, also uh, it provided um a kind of a series of um, um articles uh, made in the uh, dialogue form so uh, it was a com common feature uh, if we look at the other women's magazine or magazines uh, produced by men also of those times a uh, similar kind of features we do come across uh, so uh, in nutshell i would say that uh, in the 19th century this magazine which uh, was started by a woman sustained for four years uh, no doubt that it could not sustain for a, a longer time maybe because of the financial constraints and also because uh, because of some other issues faced by the uh, editor one can see that um, uh, women have the way women came forward and they express their views the problems that they were facing because of the gender discrimination and the um, so in the various uh, 
contemporary issues, uh, the hurdles that they were facing for education, one can definitely see that um, they were trying to raise the issues and they played a very active role in uh, expressing and creating a, uh, a society based on man-woman equality. Uh, with this, I uh, stop here and um, I once again thank uh, all the um, uh, members of ICHR for providing me this opportunity to um, express my views on uh, the topic history and gender. And um, um, uh, this, uh, I mean, after this, uh, there will be a question and answer session, which perhaps uh, 15 minutes have been given for that. Uh, so you can write it um, right on the Facebook page and I will try to give answers to that. With this, I conclude here. Thank you once again.